Joining us on the show once again is Gary Trent Jr. Um, Gary, first off, welcome back. All that kind of stuff. We need to get your dad back on the show too. So this is just a shameless plug to tell him to pull up as well. All right. No, I got you. Again, all he needs is somebody to listen to. He crazy. That's all he wants somebody to do is listen, and he will talk all day. So, yeah. listen, we're gonna we're gonna call the clear out. We know what to do, man. When we interview him, we don't even prepare questions, bro. That's that's what we do. We we just chat with him. All right, listen. I hear you. Yeah, so um, we're gonna talk a little basketball, and then uh, we'll 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 talk uh, fashion, we'll talk style, we'll talk your collaboration with Gillette. But um, I wanted to take you back to this summer. This summer, you chose to opt in, stay in with the Raptors for this season. Um, I wanted to ask you, sort of, what went into that decision for you, and um, how are you feeling about it right now? To be honest with you, really, just most of my decisions in life was basically was just best for you know my family and myself. To be honest with you, to start off, obviously, I've been here for a certain amount of time now. With No matter how everything is going on, no matter what's going on, I continue to try to come in and work and try to do, you know, whatever I can to showcase towards winning. And that's what I'm going to continue to do, you know. So to be back here and where we're at now, new coach, whole new system, a whole new, you know, couple new players. Right now, we're trying to continue to figure it out and get as many wins as we can. In the process, you know, we're still learning. We're still showing improving. We're still getting better every day. But the thing is, if we stay together and we continue to attack every single issue and problem that we have as a collective group and go at it head on, I feel like we'll be fine. You know, if everybody stays together, nobody points fingers, nobody makes excuses, nobody, you know, does this, that, and the third, it'll be a great thing. All right. So, um, one thing we keep talking about on the show, because we're tracking, especially with Darko coming in and bringing a new offense, right? We're tracking the results of that right now. And obviously, you guys are off to a bit of a slow start um, offensively. Defensively, you guys are solid like we kind of expected you guys to be. Um, offensively, where do you see the room for growth for you guys as a group collectively? Spacing, knowing where we can get our buckets in the offense, knowing what's our strengths in the system, knowing what works, what doesn't work. Again, wrinkle out in the kinks and continue to watch the film. We see, okay, here, what just doesn't work here, how we can attack this there, you know, and formulate it. And that's what it's, you know, really about, really, really all about is continue to try to, you know, find different ways to win and find different things that work. Right. Well, I mean, you're obviously going to be a big part of the offense. Um, you know, it's something where the last couple of seasons we've seen you up around almost 20 points a game. Um, you know, right now you're, you're a little down, but at the same time, we know what your level is going to be. How do you feel in terms of your fit, your comfort in, in the in the in the offense right now? Again, I'm going to continue to try to come in and work and figure it out just how everybody else is figuring it out again. Whether I've, what I've done here in the last three seasons, whether it's minutes up from last last few seasons here, minutes down, shots up, shots down, playing time down. You're finishing games, not finishing games, none of that really matters. You got to come in and work and whatever time you're out on the floor. That's what, you know, you're showcasing, and that's what you got to try to do in the time of impact to winning. So, again, my approach every day is to come in, you know, work, be a great teammate, and, you know, control what I can control and try to come in and contribute to winning. And that's my main focus, and that's all I really focus on. Got you, got you. All right, so earlier we talked about, you choosing to opt back in with the Raptors. Um, you know, if you had to pitch someone else, another player in the league who had never played in Toronto before, if you had to pitch Toronto, both as a city and as an organization, what would that pitch be? A great city. Has great food, you know, uh, a pretty decent nightlife, a pretty great fan base, a great following. It's not just a state that's behind you. It's a country behind you. You know, you will come here, you'll be able to work, develop, have some winning, you know, some winning traditions and some winning, you know, understanding and work ethics and championship, you know, ideology and thinking on winning, you know, does it's different. You know, I just had an interview and I was talking to somebody, everybody's perception is different on, you know, how they were in brought into the league, whether you're the number one pick. It's going to be different from somebody that's from the second round or if you're a 13th pick, you know, everybody's perception is different. And, you know, everybody's organization is different as well, too. You know, when I first got to the league or on the outside looking into the league, you would think, oh, it's the NBA. 
it's kind of a template and a format of how each organization is. And that's not the case at all. Like every organization is literally different down to the medical staffs, whether how they interact with each other or interact with the players, down to the coaches, down to the front offices, from top to bottom everywhere. But really mm -hmm. here, I would say it's really uh, come in or work. We're coming to win championships. We can have some fun. We joke around here and there, but we don't play around too much, you know, in a sense with our approach, you know, with certain things. And we, you will come here to win it. You know, you will come here to be a part of something that wants to chase greatness. And if wants to be a part of greatness, and if that's something you want to be a part of or do, you know, this would be the place for that. Yeah, I hear that because the word you kept using over and over again is winning, right? And, and that's what, it's almost a running joke how much Masai says it, but it's not funny like that because it's actually what he believes in top down organization. You know, we walk in the gym, it says win on the big board. So, I mean, yeah. look, listen, it's a journey to that process too, you know, obviously because we as fans, you know, and media, we saw 2019, we saw how fun that was, but you 100%. know, it was that whole journey that led up to that point. And I think the, yeah, I mean, listen, you know, we're, we're, we're hoping all to get eventually to that point. Last question on basketball um, before we talk about fashion and all that kind of stuff. But um, I had to ask you this because it happened. It happened <laughs> last week. Y'all closing? <laughs> <laughs> Yo, it feels like they're trying to shut me down. Uh, you got called for your first career flop against the Mavs. So this is a new rule, <laughs> right? A new tech or whatever. You got a tech for flopping. Mm -hmm. You didn't even hit the floor. You kind of just got knocked back. I think it was Dante Exum you were guarding. But your reaction as a player in the moment, have you ever been called for flopping? And also, I guess you never got a tech for flopping because it's a new rule, but what was your side of things? I probably would have been called for one. I don't even know if I've ever been called for a flop, to be honest with you. But two, to my defense, if you rewatch the clip, he made contact. All I did was just stumble back, and then I tried to come back to playing defense. They thought it was a flop, but again, it was contact. But... That's what the call was, and there's no change in it in the middle of the game. So it is what it is. Mm. I mean, I, I think, look, as a league, they're definitely trying to um, implement new rules and, and whatever. But I feel like it's got to be like one of those like meme worthy, egregious ones. You know, you falling over, all this other stuff. Like, yeah, that, I don't that, know. You falling over, rolling, but you know, they, they, they're picking shoes on, you know, with their yeah. call. It's all good, though. You know, I'm going to come in and still play hard and play defense. You know? Keep my hands out. And whatever it's called, is going to be called. <laughs> That's right. It's not in your hands sure. anymore. All right. So sure. uh, we got to we gotta pivot over. And uh, I wanted to mention, so, you know, Gillette is announcing the return of its Choose Your Game Face campaign in celebration of its continued role as the official shave and beard care partner of the Raptors. And you, obviously, you're part of Team Styled. You know, if you watch a Raptors game, we see you on the commercials. You know, you on one side, Grady's on the other side. I'm going to ask you about Grady in a second. Uh but okay, so take me through your process, right? So, um, you know, like, what is your like uh, face care routine when it comes to taking care of the beard? Well, you know, keep my game face ready. You know, you see the nice beard, obviously. King C Gillette has amazing products. Whether you can, you know, wash, condition, they have a nice trimmer. You know, you can do whatever you do with that. You know, could look good, feel good, play good, that type of thing. But you know. That's really about it. You know, my beard has been growing. You know, you brought up Grady. He's not there yet all the way. But, <laughs> I don't know if he'll ever get there, man. <laughs> nah, who knows? You know, maybe if he grew up a little bit, you know, he might. But, again, speaking on Grady, it was great to, you know, obviously have that opportunity to even film, you know, the, the shoot with him. We had a couple photo shoots, a commercial mm -hmm. shoot that was about four or five hours. You know, it was even before – the season even started, so I wasn't really even being around him every day. So it was early introduction of just who he is and how he conversates. You know, his approach to it as a rookie was super serious, and it was super, it was super cool to you know see him working in that light. You know, obviously see him shooting and practicing the gym, but now I'm seeing him trying to remember lines and say uh, certain photos and take certain <laughs> poses and stuff yeah. like that. So it was cool just to see him in that light. So you know, it was good. Well, I was gonna say, well, Grady you know, these kids are different, right? This is part of the NIL generation. You know what I mean? Like this ain't his first ad, you know what I mean? Yeah, he was part of that. He was part of that. It's crazy. Yeah. 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 You saw my draft day, not only with the suit, everyone was looking at the suit. People didn't see the chain though. Yeah. He be, he stay super icy. He already icy. He got a couple chains on the scene. Okay. You know, that's that NIL bread, you know, 
yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, listen, on the topic of Grady, right, who is obviously part of Team Smooth and mm-hmm. looks to be, he's going to stay on Team Smooth for a while, if I have to predict, you know what I mean? But, um, yeah. so I'm thinking about him, and he's coming in as a 19-year-old. And I, you also came into the league as a 19-year-old as well. So what do you remember about, like, coming to the league as a teenager still and trying to figure out sort of both what you're supposed to do on the court and also life off the court? 100%. Really just on the court was just the pace and the speed. And, you know, as the years went on, everything slowed down and it gets slower and slower as the years continue. You know, off the court, I already had a, a pro approach to my life prior to me getting to the league. And obviously my father being in the league and all the resources that I had to understand what it takes to be a pro and the things you need to do. So I wouldn't really say too much of that changed, but really was just seeing, I would say, other players in the NBA, whether they was mentoring me or, for example, when I went to Portland, just seeing how Dame and CJ and Melo and Evan Turner and Chief Aminu and how everybody had their different approaches and their different things. And I watched how they carried themselves on the court. I watched how they was carrying themselves off the court, you know, everything. So just trying to learn, absorb, and, you know, he's doing the same thing. And Brady's been doing a great job. Again, like you said, he's 19, and he he has a long way to go. He's going to continue to prove, and, you know, he's there. He's playing. He's nowhere a finished product of what he's going to be or what he can be. You know, he continues to work, and the sky's the limit. Yeah, and you get the sense, too, that he's already a really mature kid, you know, for his age. I don't know if that's just for us in the media, but is he is he like that <laughs> behind the scenes? Is he... Is he mature? Yeah, I would say he's too mature, but you got to think, you know, he's a he's kind of a mature 19-year-old in the sense, but you got to remember he's on the team. So a lot of still, a lot of jokes and a lot of stuff, nothing wrong with it. You know, he does joke yeah. around a lot yeah. or make certain sounds or certain things or laugh or certain <laughs> stuff, but, you know, he's great and he's funny. He's hilarious and, you know, he, he's cool people. All right. I want to ask you one thing about fashion before I hit you with this little surprise that I guess you already know about, but... um. <laughs> You know your teammates, right? There's this is such a big thing now in the NBA where you walk in, the tunnel is this huge thing. Everyone wants to put it on the fit, um, and you know I, I'm just looking at the, your teammates right now. There's such a certain diversity to it. There's there's Garrett Temple who comes into every game looking like a Bay Street lawyer. You know, yeah. suit, three piece shoes, super, everything super clean, super clean and professional. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, and then there's you. Right. What I would say that you're 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 the most fashionable guy on the team. I'm not, this is my own personal opinion. Uh-huh. But you know, you, you got your style. Um, but then there's there's certain guys in the league that just come in sweats. Do you ever talk to them about that? Because it's just like, yo, at a certain point, like I guess some guys just opt out and they're like, yo, I guess I'm just coming to hoop. Like I don't need to do all this. But I want to hear your perspective on that. No, ain't nothing wrong with that. You know, it's a lot of guys that you know that do that. It's even certain guys, you know. And our team that may do that, you know, shout out to my man, OG. You know, OG will pull up yeah. sometimes in, a, you know, uh, some basketball shorts, you know, in a hoodie <laughs> with no T-shirt under, you know what I'm saying? But that's just Come his on, swag. That's, that's his style. You know, nothing wrong with it. He comes to the gym and he had no business. So it really don't matter, you know, what he wearing or what he pull up in. As long as you come in and handle business, you know, mm. they don't care. <laughs> I know. I got you, man. No, the funniest yeah. guy was... Uh... I guess Jacoparto's like this now a little bit, but Marcus Gasol used to just always come to the game in his Raptor sweats, like ready to go. If, if he had to sit on the bench directly off he was, the bus, he was ready. <laughs> he was ready. Like you got the sense that he yeah. had short, he had shorts on under his pants. You know what I mean? Like he's yeah. not ready. So listen, exactly. um, you know you you've been giving out obviously a lot of fits. You know on, on your on, on your uh, Instagram or just you know you walking in the gym and stuff like that. And I mentioned earlier that, you know, you are, at least in my opinion, one of the more fashionable guys in the league, if, uh, definitely on the team. Uh, I just wanted to, you know, get your advice because, again, you're, you're you're stamped in this front. So I need fashion advice, clearly, based on sort of what I'm wearing right now. So I'm going to get you to, to to help me out with a couple of these fits. All right. You're going to tell me if it's uh, if it's a smooth fit. All right. As in you don't really need to do anything with it. If it's a styled fit, like you got to do a little bit more to, to get it to a certain point. <laughs> or if you just got to shave it off. All right. Shave off this fit. Like throw it all in the trash. All right. All right. I got you, man. Let's see what's up. All right. Let me share this screen with you. So this is me actually before a game earlier this week, a Milwaukee game. I'm, I'm courtside. I'm doing a little radio hit, but I got okay. my jacket on. But I need you to tell me, is this smooth? Is this styled? Is this, or do I got to shave this off? No, nah, let me see. This smooth, bro. You just chilling, bro. You on the chill vibes. You see what I'm yeah. saying? Look, you got the, the Vancouver with the gray hoodie under there. Then with the 
with the gray, you see him with the gray pants, with the yellow top. You see what I'm saying? You're going crazy. The white shoes is cool. Uh -huh. It is decent. But if you had, what well, do go with it? But if you had like a little bit of green in them, like the little grizzly undershirt. Okay. Or, like, or if you had a, little, a tint of the little yellow in it and the shoes or something, you feel me? It could really go crazy. But that ain't bad, bro. You on, you on the radio, so that's cool. <laughs> I am on the radio. You're right. No, yeah, man. I'm going to let you know. I'm a regular civilian. I got like five pairs of shoes to cycle through, so I don't have no yellow shoes, unfortunately. But I appreciate you. That's good. What about this one? Another one at work. So obviously I'm 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 in the camo right there. You might have to squint a little bit. No, that... that's smooth. That's a cardigan? That's was is that a cardigan? No, it's just a is shirt. Is that a cardigan man. or a jacket? No, it's just a shirt, man. It's just a shirt. It's like a, oh, it's a okay. fleece it like, shirt. It looks fuzzy. It looks like a little fuzzy little. It is little fuzzy. Oh, see? Yeah. No, it was. Okay. Yeah. No, that's hard. Right. That's clean. I like that. All right, yeah, baggy yeah. baggy pants then is cool, you, right? Then you even threw the little the scarf over the swag on the mouth. Yeah, I love the mouth. I like that. I like <laughs> yeah. That. No, I, I know. I know. Uh, I know. I know something that. Uh, um, I was gonna compare myself to you. I'm not gonna do that. Never mind. Forget that. All right. Next one. <laughs> nah, next that's one. clean. That's clean. Ooh, that is that bread in your hair. So this is this is a picture of me when I was in high school. Okay. Uh, I was the high school school treasurer. All right, okay. so we had to take photos oh, for student so government. You got all the bands in your hand. That's why. That's why I got. I, I think I got like forty five dollars Canadian in that, Ooh, in, that okay. in that picture. But what about the fit though? As a as as a as an eighteen year old, what about this eighteen year old fit? That eighteen year old fit, man, looked like you really about business. <laughs> I don't really know. I don't really know too many eighteen year olds that's you know coming with the button up, tucked in, with the polo. You feel me? You coming about business? You coming uh -huh. to work? You coming? You're not playing no games, and that's why you the treasurer and holding the money because you was about you was about business. You know what I'm saying so. All right. Ain't wrong with that. That's clean. You feel me? Yeah. That's yeah. Throw in there. Throw that in again. I even had back in my day. I wear a jersey to school. Okay. Then the next day I wear a sweater vest to school. Then I wear a <laughs> polo button up. You know I mix yeah. it up all types of different cardigans. Yeah, sweater okay. vest. So. Yeah, nah, this smooth. That ain't bad at all. Yeah, what I gotta do is th is cut the hair though, man. That haircut is uh, is tough, man. That's uh that's a yeah. 2010 haircut, it's, man. No, ain't nothing wrong with that. You know what I mean? All right. It could even be longer. Wow. It, it was longer. longer. That'd be hard, too. You feel me? That's cool right there. But if you had it hanging, that'd be hard. All right. Damn. I, I got to let my hair down more. All right. Last one. <laughs> <laughs> this one is terrible, bro. They, they have you doing a, a work company photo shoot. And, um, and, and ultimately, this is sort of what they had um, sort of suggested to me. Something similar to this. But, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to need your serious help. I need a lot of help on this one, man. No, that's cool. They, no, it's not come even that on, bad. Gary. No, no, bro. No, no, no. Listen, no, it's not that bad. If they would have switched, if they could have just put like a, bl a black turtleneck or a light gray turtleneck, you in business. That's okay. all. Okay, you're that's right. You're right. You to switch. They just got your turtleneck off. You see what I'm saying? That's mm. it. Okay. Wow. Well, if they do a black turtleneck or a light gray, it could go perfect with the jeans. And then if you get too high, you can take the jacket off. And then the yeah. dark with the light, it'll contrast off. Yeah, the, the hand rubbing, the hand rubbing pose is uh is, is not the coolest pose. I'm not gonna lie to you, but I appreciate you, you Gary. Mean? Well, you you like the hand pose? <laughs> All right. All right. The, you was rubbing your hands together, right? And they took a picture mid picture. <laughs> no, they directed everything out of this, man. They said put your hands together. They said rub them. I was like, all right, man, whatever you guys want. Yeah, so, ain't nothing yeah. wrong with that. That's all right. them used doing the bird man rub together. Hands. Okay, yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's, yeah. All right. Well, Gary, listen, man, I appreciate this, man. I got to get your nah, consulting bro, in real life, good. too, man. All right. Well, listen, appreciate you for joining us on the show. All right. We still got to get your dad on the show. Tell him we got a new studio. All right. Okay. Bigger that studio. The, light, the, light, the light's going to flicker on and off. Bro, the lights were brighter than expected. Jared <laughs> Allen style. You know what I mean? Like, it's, it's man, in that. Sounds good, though. Yeah, tell him to come through. I know he always makes a, a trip every, you know, month, two months or so. So, mm -hmm. but otherwise, you know, hope you get healthy. Hope you get back on the court, you know, uh, big game against the Celtics. So appreciate you. All right. Thank you, man. Be good. I'll see you soon.